Today on our 2009 Nissan Murano, we'll be installing the e-trailer Universal Brake Controller Install Kit, part number ETB-C7. We will be doing this in conjunction with the Takancha Voyager Prodigy Brake Controller, part number 39510. To start, we'll first go ahead and assemble the 7-pole adapter bracket. With the hardware provided, we'll use it to attach the bracket to the 7-pole adapter. We'll go ahead and take the bracket, feed it over the wires, and up to the back of the mounting surface for the 7-pole adapter. Then we'll take the screws, feed them through the front side of the 7-pole, and secure it with the nuts on the back side. Once we have all four in place, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. I'm gonna go ahead and take some black electrical tape and wrap up eight to 10 inches of our wire. This will assist in bundling our wires together and help protect it from the elements. Next, we'll go ahead and attach the draw tight no drill mounting bracket, part number 18136. Using the fasteners provided with the bracket, we can secure it to the seven pole bracket. Now we'll go ahead and mount the new seven pole bracket directly to the hitch using the worm clamp provided with our tow ready mounting bracket. Note, I recommend to feed the wires through the hole in the bracket so that they'll go up and over the hitch. We'll go ahead and do that before we install it onto the hitch. Now with the bracket on the hitch, we'll go ahead and secure it with the worm gear clamp. Now with the worm gear clamp tightened down, there'll be some excess hanging over. We're gonna go ahead and cut it off to trim off the excess from the clamp. But note, after we cut it off, it will create some sharp edges. Next, we'll take the four pole flat connector that's already mounted on the vehicle and route it over to our seven pole connector. Here, we're gonna go ahead and add some dielectric grease, part number 11755 between the two four pole flat connectors. Then, to additionally secure these connectors together, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap them with a zip tie. Then we'll cut off the excess from the zip tie. Now with our four pole flat connectors secured, we'll go ahead and bring in the gray duplex cable. We'll need to strip back a couple inches of sheathing and then strip back the wires. We'll connect the black wire to the black wire coming from our seven pole connector with a pre-attached yellow buck connector and the white wire to the blue wire. Now with all our connections made, we'll go ahead and use some black electrical tape to wrap up our wires. We're going to route the white wire with a pre-attached ring terminal, which will be the ground for our new 7-pole connector. The ground will need to be secured directly to the vehicle frame using the self-tapping screw provided with our install kit. Now with that done, we'll continue routing the gray duplex cable up to the front of the vehicle. Keep in mind when routing your wires, stay away from any moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as the exhaust. Using some black zip ties as we go, we'll secure the wiring to the vehicle as necessary. Once we make it to the bottom of the engine bay, we'll then go ahead and take a pull wire to assist in routing it up through the engine compartment. Pull wire could be a stiff piece of wire. In this case, we're gonna use a piece of air tubing. We'll now go ahead and use the pull wire to pull it up through the engine bay. Now we'll go ahead and take an approximate measurement on the length of wire and cut off any excess. The white wire will get routed into the cabin of the vehicle and the black wire will stay in the engine compartment and be the power for our seven pole connector. To route our white wire into the cabin of the vehicle, 
we'll need to make a hole into the manufacturer's grommet. Note on the inside of the firewall, there's also some insulation that'll have to be cut away. Once you cut away the insulation and use a utility knife to cut a slice into the grommet, we'll then go ahead and use a red pull wire to assist with routing our wire into the cabin of the vehicle. We'll then go ahead and take the remaining grade two bucks cable that we cut off previously. We'll take some black electrical tape and secure the white wire to the gray duplex cable and then pull the gray duplex cable back into the cabin where we can gain access to the white wire. We'll then go ahead and remove the wire from the gray duplex cable and leave both the gray duplex cable and white wire in the cabin. We'll go ahead and mount the new Takancha brake controller. Using the self-tapping screws and bracket provided with the brake controller, we'll go ahead and mount them here to the bottom of the dash. Now with the brake controller mount, Secured, we'll go ahead and mount the brake controller to the bracket. Next, we'll take the draw tight replacement brake control plug and plug it into the back of the brake controller pigtail. Our next step will be connecting the red wire from the brake controller pigtail to the vehicle's brake switch and specifically the wire that'll be hot or charged when the brake pedal is depressed. Using a test light, we've already gone ahead and located the wire, which will be the yellow wire going into the vehicle's brake switch. To connect the red wire with the yellow wire, we'll use the quick splice connector provided with our install kit. We'll slide the quick splice connector over the yellow wire, and then slide the red wire into the quick splice connector. Once we have it installed, we'll go ahead and crimp it down and then close the clasp. Next, we'll take the blue wire from our brake controller pigtail and connect it with the white wire that we ran into the cabin of the vehicle. This white wire came from our seven pole connector where we connected to the blue wire coming from the seven pole. This will be the power for our trailer braking. To connect the two, we'll go ahead and cut off any excess wire, strip back both ends and then use the yellow butt connector provided with our install kit. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the black and white wire coming from the brake controller pigtail and the black and white wire inside the gray duplex cable. We'll strip back a couple inches of our gray duplex cable, then strip back the wires. We'll match them color for color, black to black, white to white, for power and ground for the brake controller. Now with all our connections made here in the cabin of the vehicle, we'll go ahead and wrap up the connection points with some black electrical tape and then secure the wiring up underneath the dash with the black zip ties provided with our install kit. Now that we're back in the engine compartment, we'll need to mount the breakers for our power leads. We'll first mount the 40 amp breaker using the self-tapping screws provided with our install kit. Next, we'll mount the second breaker, which will be for the power going to the brake controller. We're gonna be using the 20 amp breaker. Now with both breakers mounted, We'll go ahead and take the black wire from our gray duplex cable, cut off any excess, strip it back, and add a small ring terminal. We can then take the ring terminal, add to the silver side of our 40 amp breaker. We'll then install the star washer and nut to secure it. Next, we'll take our leftover gray duplex cable, cut off any excess, and then strip back the gray sheathing so that we can run the black wire to our breaker, and the white wire will ultimately get run to ground. To secure it to ground, we'll cut off any excess, strip it back, and add a large ring terminal. To attach the ring terminal to the battery, we'll go ahead and clip out a small section of the ring terminal, loosen the stud on the battery, slide the ring terminal in position, and then re-secure it. Now with our ground secured, we'll need to run two hot leads for our breakers. One from our 40 amp breaker to the positive battery terminal, and a second from our 20 amp breaker to the positive battery terminal. We'll go ahead and take the leftover black wire from our gray duplex cable, strip it back, and add a small ring terminal. 
We'll then take that ring terminal and secure it to our 40 amp breaker. Then we'll go ahead and route the wire over to the positive battery terminal. Next, I'll go ahead and repeat the same process for a hot lead going from the 20 amp breaker to the positive battery terminal. Now with all the wires run to our breakers, installed and secured, we'll go ahead and take the two hot leads, route them to the positive battery terminal, cut off any excess, strip them back and add two large ring terminals. Once we have our ring terminals installed, we'll go ahead and remove the nut on the positive battery post, put our ring terminals into position over the stud on the positive battery post, and then reinstall the nut and secure it. Now so we can reinstall the positive battery post cover, we're going to go ahead and clip out a small section to compensate for the wire as it routes to the positive battery post. Just using a pair of side cutters, we'll trim off this corner here. Once we have that done, we'll then reinstall the positive battery post cover. With that done, this will complete the install of our ETB C7 brake controller install kit. Part number ETB C7 in conjunction with the Takancha Voyager Prodigy brake controller part number 39510 for our 2009 Nissan Murano.